Hi, I am Shanaz. In last lecture, we have seen that if we have a projective algebraic set, say X, which is non empty. Now, by projective algebraic set, uh, we mean this X is of the form. I mean, it is the projective zero set of some ideal J. Then uh, we uh, saw that the ideal of the Kuhn of X is actually the homogeneous ideal of the set uh, x and uh, if we look at uh, the cone of x itself then this turns out to be uh, the affine zero set of the ideal j so this cone reduces the projective algebraic sets to the affine algebraic sets so one can see over here we have x which is uh, a projective algebraic set then by taking it as cool we get the affine algebraic set so now this helps us uh, to state and prove the projective null sensors so we have this theorem so this is actually the projective null sensors So it states the, that that if we have an ideal say j uh, in the polynomial ring in n plus one variables, uh, so suppose this j is a homogeneous ideal, uh, then we have the following so we have the first item that is the if the project to uh, project to zero set of uh, the ideal j is empty and then uh, i mean this is empty if and only if if uh, I contains all homogeneous polynomials of degree n. That is, I contains all homogeneous polynomials, which are by which we mean the forms of degree n for some positive integer n. And for the second item, we have if the project to zero set of the ideal J is non empty, then the homogeneous ideal of the project to zero set of ideal J is actually the radical of J. So this is the projective version of null sensors. So let us prove the item first. So let us suppose that X is the set, I mean the projective zero set of the ideal J. So remember that uh, uh, in affine case, zero set of an ideal uh, is empty if and only if J contains a unit. That is, if J is the whole ring. But uh, here the case is different. So if uh, this X is empty, then the uh, I mean the ideal of J is not the whole ring, but it is smaller than that. So let us suppose this x is the zero set of, I mean the project is zero set of, and the ideal <coughs> j. So then, so here we one has to remember the definition of kuhn. So remember that the kuhn of x is the set of all pointers in the 
affine a n plus 1 space such that the class of those points lie in x and uh, union with 0. So then x is empty set if and only if the cone of x is singleton set i mean if it is only zero but one should note here that the cone of x is uh, the affine zero set of ideal j but this is the case when x is non-empty so if x is empty then the cone of x is the singleton zero so for any arbitrary set x i mean the project to algebraic set uh, x the cone of x is actually the uh, the affine zero set of the ideal j uh, union zero because this zero shows up here uh, for the case when x is empty so we know that the cone of x is actually the affine zero set of uh, the ideal j uh, together with the element zero so thus x is empty if and only if Uh, zero set of the ideal j is either empty because uh, this x is empty so this is either empty or zero set of ideal j uh, is the singleton zero because we know that this set over here this is zero now I mean this is singleton set zero so for this set to be the singleton zero it <coughs> is possible only when the affine zero set of ideal j is either the singleton zero or it is empty <coughs> so now we can uh, invoke the affine null standard status because now we are dealing the algebraic zero sets so now by usual null standard status i mean by affine null standard status we know the radical of j is actually the ideal of the affine zero set of ideal j now this affine set of this i mean the ideal of this affine set uh, affine algebraic set is the whole ring so this is the whole ring if this set over here is empty if the affine zero set of idle j is empty otherwise uh, it is the ideal generated by the variables so if uh, the affine zero set of ideal j is singleton set zero because uh, any polynomial uh, generated by variables are the polynomials with uh, degree zero term corners i mean zero So, so in both cases, one can uh, see over here, this ideal is going to be a subset of the radical of J. So, this shows that in any case, in any case, the radical of ideal J 
contains the ideal generated by the variables so now if this is the case uh, then each x i is in the radical object that means for each i there is some j i i mean the positive integer uh, j i such that x i to the power j i is contained in j so this follows by the definition of radical of j so therefore uh, for each i where i runs from 0 up to n there exists say j i in n such that uh, x i to the power j i is inside the ideal j now let us take now take n to be equal to uh, j naught plus up to j n now if this n is i mean if this uh, if n is this number over here then any more monomial of degree n in the polynomial ring lies in j so then any monomial uh, of degree n uh, in the polynomial ring k x naught up to x n lies in j so this is because any mono, uh, monomial in the polynomial ring of degree at least n uh, then um, the power of one of the x i's must be some power of j i so that means if um, that is the case then uh, the mono uh, any mono um, monomial of degree at least n is going to be an element of this ideal so this proves uh, the first item now for the second item that is uh, trivial so now for the second item we have to prove um, if the project to zero of uh, the ideal j is non empty then the homogeneous ideal of the project to zero of j is actually the radical of j so now suppose x which is uh, by definition the project to zero set of the idle j is on non empty let us assume this is non empty so then the homogeneous ideal of set x is actually the ideal of kuhn of x But cone of x is same as the affine zero set of idle j. So this is i of zero set of the ideal j. Now by weak, I mean by usual null standards, this is actually a radical of j. So by affine null standards. Uh, ideal of the affine zero set of ideal j is actually the radical of j so hence uh, the homogeneous ideal of x where x is the project to zero set of ideal j is actually the radical of j so this proves uh, the projective version of null standards. So actually, projective null standards is a, uh, so this is a uh, straightforward. I mean, this 
follows from the affine nose tonsils if one knows the story of coons so we have this slight uh, uh, i mean slight difficulty with the ambidexter because of the relationship between coons and projectile algebra axis so you know uh, to see i mean you can see um, to define coons we have to add zero uh, and um, this is because of the zero which somehow uh, messes up with our argument so this idle over here this has a special name i mean this idle is called the uh, irrelevant ideal so let us make this a definition so the ideal generated by so this is actually a maximal ideal in the polynomial ring is called the irrelevant ideal now we have corollary here so if we so the maps i h and z p are actually mutually inverse bijections between so they are mutually inverse bijections between uh, the relevant homogeneous radical ideals between relevant homo genius radical ideals say j in the polynomial ring and <coughs> project to algebra access and the projective algebra access say x in p to the n <coughs> so this is a straightforward result this follows from the project to null standards so what this result says that if we have the collection of project to algebra access so we have the collection of project to algebra access say x in pn and we have another collection of relevant homogeneous radical ideals say j in the polynomial ring so between these two collections we have so we have a map from this collection to this collection which is i h and from this collection to this collection we have the map z p so these maps they behave as uh, i mean bijections which are also inverses to each other so like in a fine case uh, as a irreducible project to algebra which is correspond to homogeneous prime ideals so we have uh, an uh, analogous result here with the projective uh, i mean for the projective case so we have a result proposition so 
so it has two items first item is a project to uh, algebra exit say x in pn is a project to variety i mean it is uh, irreducible so this is a project to variety which means it is the uh, irreducible set if and only if if the homogeneous ideal of x is a prime ideal and then we have the second item so a hyper so a hyper surface say the project to zero of the polynomial f which is a project to algebra set so this is uh, irreducible if and only if the polynomial f which is in the polynomial ring k x naught through xn is uh, irreducible now let us prove in the first item so this is proof of item first so suppose uh, otherwise that the set x uh, is reducible so suppose in the project to algebra is set x is reducible so then we can write X as the union of two smaller closed sets, say X1 union X2 for closed subsets X1, which is properly contained in X, and X2, which is properly contained in X. Now, if this is the case, then Clearly, the cone of X is the union of cone of X1 and X2, cone of X2. So, where uh, the C of XI is closed, and so where cone of XI is closed it's closed and cone of x i is properly contained in cone of x so this is true for i equal to 1 and 2 so this follows from the definition of cone of a project to algebra x set now it follows that the cone of x is reducible so it follows that um, c of x cone of x is reducible now this cone being an algebraic set affine algebraic subset of the affine space this shows that it is ideal is uh, not a prime ideal so this is uh, so this is a reducible subset of affine n plus one space so then the ideal of 
com nox is uh, not a prime ideal. So this shows that, but one can know, uh, one can see that the idle of cone of x is same as the homogeneous idle of x. So, but ideal of this cone of x is same as the homogeneous ideal of x. So hence, hence i homogeneous angle of x is not is not a prime ideal so this proves one direction uh, this is equivalent to say that uh, i mean if uh, idle of x is prime idle then x is uh, irreducible so hence if the homogeneous idle of x is a prime ideal then x is uh, irreducible conversely So conversely, assume that this i is the homogeneous idle of x, and suppose this is not a prime ideal. So if this is the case, then there exist say two polynomials f and g in i mean which are not in i such that their product is in i so we have two polynomials f and g homogeneous polynomials uh, which are not in i but f and but their product is in i now f and g being homogeneous polynomials not in i that means there is at least one part of f and g uh, i mean one term of f and g which is not in i so let uh, there i mean the degrees of those terms be i and j so let i and j belong to n be the minimal be the minimal such that the homogeneous component i is homogeneous component of f and j is homogeneous component of g are not in i so because these two polynomials are not in i so there has to be uh, some terms uh, which are not in i now what we do by subtracting the homogeneous components of f and g of lower degree uh, we can assume i and j are so one should write this here so by subtracting the homogeneous components of f and g of lower degree we can so since this i and j uh, is the least integers uh, for which these two terms are not in i so if we subtract the uh, lower degree terms 
then uh, by subtracting uh, uh, those terms from these two polynomials uh, would not change the fact that f and g uh, is not in i so by subtracting those terms uh, would mean that f and g are <coughs> still not in the ideal i so we can assume i and j are the lowest degree uh, occurring in f and g so we can assume i and j are lowest degree terms uh, occurring in occurring in f and g respectively so then uh, if we look at the product uh, then if we look at the product of these two components f i and g j so this is a homogeneous component of minimal degree of the product f dot g so this is the homogeneous component of minimal degree of the element f dot g in i so so this shows that now if f dot g is uh, in i then each of it is term is in i in particular this term over here this is also in i so since the uh, i mean the element f or i ith homogeneous component of f product with the jth uh, i mean degree i component of f and degree j component of g is in ideal i let x1 be the projective zero set of the ideal i union with the component fi and x2 be the projective zero set of the ideal i union the jth component of polynomial g so one should note here that uh, since so since uh, f or f i and g j since they are not in the ideal i this shows that which is the same as the homogeneous ideal of x so it follows that uh, the sets x1 and x2 they are both properly contained in x because this uh, element over here this is not in the ideal i and similarly this element over here this is not in the ideal i so therefore this x over here this properly contains both the sets x1 and x2 so also if i look at the union of these two sets x1 union x2 so this is actually the project zero set of the i i union fi union in the projective zero set of the ideal i union gj so this is same as 
the project to zero set of the ideal i union the product of these two elements. But f uh, but the product of the, I mean this element over here this is in, uh, inside the ideal i so this is same as the project to zero sort of ideal i so this is same as uh, the project to set of the ideal of uh, x because we have uh, we have set i to be the homogeneous ideal of uh, homogeneous ideal offset x so this means that uh, I mean this is same as x so this shows that x is reducible so this shows that so one can note over here both x1 and x2 they are uh, Close it. I mean, because because we are taking the project to zero set, so they are um, closer with, with respect to the Zaraski topology on PN. So this shows that X is uh, reducible. Hence, if X is uh, irreducible, uh, project to algebra X set, then it is homogeneous. L is uh, a prime ideal. So hence. If X is uh, an irreducible projective algebraic set, then the homogeneous ideal of X is prime ideal. So this proves the item first. Now for the second item, uh, we have, so if we take an element f in the polynomial ring x1 through xn, so if this is irreducible, then this polynomial ring be, being the unique factorization domain, so then the pol this is zero here then the polynomial ring x zero to x n being a unique factorization domain the ideal generated by f is a prime ideal Uh, now this being the prime ideal the result will follow from the item first so hence the result follows by item first so this proves the result